good afternoon. First of all, I'd like to mention also that I am the presently the coordinator for the Master of Science in Asian Health Practices at the UERM Graduate School. And we have a program to develop physicians and science and BS science graduates on uh, modalities of alternative and complementary medicine. But we do that as an integrative mode, whether uh, that's going to be acceptable or not, is based upon scientific background that is acceptable for both NIH and the PITAC, usually is the Philippine Institute for Traditional and Alternative Healthcare. So, so we have graduate students that tries to develop the database for our own use locally. So let me, I will not be lecturing on medicinal plants, although you see me on TV in Salamat Dok on Saturday and Sunday. Cheryl Cosim is supposed to leave by two weeks from now. Okay, we come. It's like, uh, well, alternative uh, medicine as defined by Eskenazi in 1998 is really a broad set of healthcare practices that is not readily integrated in the dominant healthcare model, especially us where we are familiar with Western medicine and we are following Western books, in fact, American books, more than United Kingdom books, so that uh, they pose challenges to the diverse societal beliefs and practices that includes cultural, economic, scientific, medical, and educational. This is the most challenging part of uh, alternative medicine, especially when we are dealing with practices that are in the rural areas. We say that there will be some form of malpractice, but we close our eyes to the uh, reality that there are practitioners there that do invasive procedures that we do not even tell whether or not they really have the right to practice that kind of uh, alternative medicine. So therefore, there should be a stricter uh, stand with the PMA, with the different societies on what to do with them. Of course, they are part of our culture. And in fact, that is a heritage. Compared to China, there's a really a, a, a long history of documentation. Unfortunately for us, we do not have that. And that is one of the reasons why we put up the master's program at UERM, to put science into the form of practice so that there will be some form of ethnographic documentation over the years, even before these practitioners die, because they are part of our heritage. So alternative medicine, as defined by NCCAM, or NCCAM, the National Center for Complementary and Alternative Medicine, which is the U.S. National Institute of Health uh, Research uh, Institute, is defined as a broad range of healing philosophies or schools of thought, approaches, therapies that mainstream Western conventional medicine and does not commonly use, uh, does not commonly use, accept or study, understand or make available in the mainstream medicine. So therefore, this uh, definition that conventional medicine uh, is difficult no, to, to merge, uh, uh, brought about the problem when they introduce the complementary component, that's where, the star, that's where the problem started. It was NCC CAM that broadened the definition by adding complementary to become complementary and alternative medicine. So, United States. Even when uh, herbal medicine was, uh, it started to boom in 1994, for example, it was the fault of the system in the United States that we have food supplements now. They become lax, and so they opened the floodgates of herbal medicines, food supplements, and therefore all of these products overflow, overflowed actually in the market, including the Philippines. And that's very difficult to control now. Okay. So implications of this definition 
the cam can now be used as an adjunct to modern medicine. That's why it's complementary. That's the implication of that definition. And CAM can be used in place of conventional therapy, all alternative. That's the most difficult part because not every one of us will accept that it can replace conventional therapy. This is the most controversial. Yet we have not uh, been able to resolve this. It stays as is. And we are now uh, gearing towards integrative medicine whereby we try to legitimize the use of uh, CAM into common uh, practice of physicians. But that's not bad. It's, that, uh, it's just that we have to be careful about our choices when to include, when not to include those modalities, especially herbal drugs that are now rampant, that we do not know uh, the quality we do not know the residue, the, what do you call this, uh, heavy metal residue, uh, insecticide residue, that has to be quality controlled before you can even accept there to be natural. By the way, the definition of a herbal drug is that any part of a plant, uh, whether leaves, stem, bark, or roots, never included in that definition are minerals and vitamins. So anything that is from the plant without any addition of chemicals is called a herbal drug. When you add a chemical such as vitamins and minerals, it becomes a food supplement. So read your label. Does it ring a bell? It pays to read the label. So anyway, the read the label on what is inside that capsule. So if you think that there are minerals and vitamins there, it's no longer a herbal drug. It becomes a food supplement. That's the WHO definition. So originated the uh, original uh, source of uh, CAM. It's a mire of the philosophies dating back thousands of years. Of course, we know that. Uh, it ranges from healing within a system of spiritual practice of cultures, such as American Indians, Hindi, the Ayurveda, Tibet, Japan, Reiki. If you're not familiar with Reiki, Reiki is uh, something that you do uh, as healers. They do perform healing by telepathic. So if you have a picture of your kid or loved one who's really sick, you can just give that to a Reiki practitioner. And the energy that flows from that person to the subject is enough to produce healing. But we are having problems, especially at the graduate school, on how to document that. Because we have a Reiki practitioners, a practitioner in the in the class, and we were really uh, trying to figure out how we can prove that it may work, in fact. China, we have the traditional Chinese medicine. And then it also extends to the modern day use of gadgets such as, you know, the zapper. The zapper is an electrical gadget where there's a flow of electricity, positive and negative. Uh, it uses a sign, uh, not sign, it's a uh, tangential or sine, cosine uh, wavelength that tries to induce low uh, electrical current into the body such that, but it's not uh, low enough, it's uh, high enough, I mean, it's high enough to destroy worms inside the intestines, for example, or even bacteria in the bloodstream. It originated from uh, the U.S., but in the Philippines, it's now being used in uh, the south, in a monastery where people, uh, where the priests or monks are in the mountains. They have no access to medical care. What they do is they use the zapper when they're sick. Now, we have not tested this, but it's available in the Philippines. Uh, they say it's, it works, no? especially when there is uh, infection and also parasitic infection, bacterial infection and, and even viral infection. And you know also the existence of magnets that has uh, also dominated the American market for a while. Alkaline water ionizer, a big business, okay? 
who's, who's drinking alkaline water? Come on, aminin nyo, baka... <laughs> so, alkaline water is it's like an antioxidant. But the problem with alkaline water is you cannot store it for a long time. It disappears. The alkalinity uh, goes down uh, after a while. I don't know how long, but that's one thing that we'd like to also document. And then clustered water is uh, water subjected to a strong magnetic field. It's like a, a blender. So the magnet rotates, the water rotates, and the molecules of water become hexagonal. They say that due to that configuration of water, it becomes the physiologic configuration of water in the cells. So, even to be not, if we take, if we drink clustered water, our metabolism is better. There is no need to produce, uh, to need, uh, there's no need to, to generate enough energy to transport this water into the cell. So, therefore, there's efficient metabolism. Okay, some reasons for CAM. We cannot also blame the people for choosing CAM because we know that there is a spiraling health uh, cost and it's, bit, it's getting uh, more costly now to get sick. And so therefore, this is one of the reasons. There is some form of dissatisfaction within the cost-effective practice which are often dictated by insurance companies. This is the only one that you can do because you're limited by reimbursement. There's a force in that kind of system. I don't know how to solve this. Even uh, PhilHealth probably has, has some problems with that. Disillusionment with the high-tech, low-touch healthcare system. Often treating only symptoms but not the cause. So the, the trouble with the with uh, this statement is what it means is that we are subjecting our patients to machines or instruments like ECG, uh, echocardiography, but we do not even talk to the patient. It's no longer humane to him or her. So how are you today? What, what did you fight with your husband? Are you depressed? Misa wala na ganon. So therefore, and even in ethical practice, now, we'd like to put back our humane touch with the patient and not like, uh, it's okay, you, you just go to the MRI and you come back. After that, you look at the results of the MRI or whatever and then you just prescribe. Not even uh, placing your, even your stethoscope, maybe. Or even uh, saying what's wrong with your, uh, with your sleep last night. So therefore, this is what it means to be high-tech, low-touch. Okay? And then, uh, I don't know whether how true this is, often treating only symptoms but not the cause. But mostly, uh, I'm, I'm sure there is no such uh, rampant uh, situation like this because we always treat the cause. We alleviate symptoms, but eventually we treat the cause. And the other one is inaccessible healthcare from conventional medicine. The best the example there is the monks in... Uh, in uh, the mountains in the south. So therefore, they have to use zapper in order to keep them healthy or even to bring down the infection of the body, whether viral, bacterial, or parasitic. Okay. We do not have data on, I hope the Philippine Pediatric Society or even PIDSP can move on to include this as part of the national interview system. Because we have a national survey for nutrition. I was formerly the uh, officer in charge of Food and Nutrition Institute, and I was talking to the director that we should include how people are using alternative medicine in the annual or, by, or every five years, I think, uh, interview for nutrition. Because, mind you, we do not know how much is, uh, our people are spending for food supplements, for vitamins that probably are mega doses. So therefore, we need this data. So if we look at the uh, United States, for example, among children, there is about 11.8% of children in the 2007 survey that have used uh, CAM. Okay, by race and ethnicity, we look at the 
the American Asian, of course, they have uh, the, there's a, the population, so therefore expected that they're huge. But look at uh, the white and the Asians, they're almost approximating each other, hindi masyado nagkakalayo, except for black and Hispanic, which probably has its own cultural uh, system of belief regarding alternative and uh, co uh, complementary alternative medicine. So therefore, we have to examine this in our population. We do not even know how many of these children do develop drug-drug interaction from the use of food supplements because right now we do not have any delineation on what food supplements are best or should not be given to children. As a rule, food supplements should not be given to children less than 10. But that's an empirical, that's an arbitrary uh, statement. We really do not know what will be safe for these children. But if you look at the, food, uh, the vitamins for children now that is marketed by big companies, they're all food supplements. If you read the label, okay, no approved therapeutic claim. There's always that. But that's law because there is no clinical trial. Okay, if you look at the cursory information, the use of CAM in, also in the United States, they have been used for common cold remedies. And if they examine this uh, from the journal infection from, uh, by Ernst, about 95 types of CAM noted. These are the variations of practices. That's huge, 95. I don't even uh, have 95 in my head types of CAM, but they have 95 types. Pneumonia, 52 types. Fungal infection, 75. The dermatologist will probably comment on that. Uh, well, that's probably fine if you are doing two topicals, no? because there are really topicals, uh, uh, plants that can be used as topicals for fungal infection. But for common cold, for example, in pneumonia, I was surprised to see 95. Pneumonia, uh, 52. We're trying to look at so now at the graduate school, two or four, for uh, graduate students looking at in vitro evidence for antimicrobial activity of medicinal plants. One is allium, which is commonly uh, your, your onion, and we're looking at uh, 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 this Sibuyas uh, Namura, no? allium uh, species, which is, uh, can be used for, we were looking at whether it's active against uh, pneumonia. Originally, it was thought of if you can use it for tuberculosis, but we are having trouble with the lab at RITM. <laughs> Uh, and then we have uh, bamboo shoots for fungal infections, even for crop. Uh, it's been reported in China for cryptococcus, for example, but uh, we'd like to find it out. The other one is ben oil. If you, if you are not aware about ben oil, ben oil is the oil derived from malungay, from the seeds of malungay. It's a very expensive oil. It's a very useful oil. It has a very low heat generating capacity. And in fact, it's being used in watches. It's a very efficient oil. It's edible oil. It is similar to coconut virgin oil, or virgin coconut oil, in the sense that there are also medium uh, or short chain or medium chain triglycerides. And the other one, what's the other one? Uh, uh, pili nut oil for skin inflammation. Oh, mga thesis ng estudyante yun. Sa UE. Our students. Now, what, is, uh, what are we talking about when we look at CAM? What are the systems? No? Just to review. Chinese and Indian medicine, China. Traditional medicine based on the philosophy of yin and yang and the flow of qi energy based on the meridians. Okay, I've done this, I've studied this, also the basic ones. In Indian medicine, it's called Ayurveda, to bring harmony of body, mind, and spirit into harmony within the individual. Because it believe, uh, Ayurvedic medicine believes that when there is this harmony, there is sickness. In homeopathic medicine, philosophy that the body can heal itself. Okay, and you can probably think of prayers as a way to heal your body. 
Okay? The, the two uh, laws here emanating from homeopathic medicine can be activated by substances. One is law of similars. Like cures like. An example, onion produces tears and then therefore can be used for colds and respiratory allergies. Siguro pag tumutuloy yung sipon mo, yun ang interpretation nila doon no? na pwede siyang gamitin. So, okay? Even though it only produces tears but not necessarily <laughs> sipon or uh, runny nose. Law of infinitesimal dose. Only a very, very small dose is required to affect a remedy. This is something that I really could not understand very well. But anyway, this is a practice that even a toxic material with a very, very low dose can trigger a, a uh, healing response. So what happens in the homeopathic is if every individual is treated uh, as a unique individual, a very specific person, if the illness may be the same. So two persons having the same illness may be treated differently in homeopathic medicine because each one is different. Person healing rubric, they call that. Okay, naturopathic medicine is your hodgepodge of all the practices. So you have Ayurveda, TCM, Greek medicine. Cures are derived from nature, usually plants and juices. So, sama-sama na yan. So, therefore, here you have practice of homeopathy, acupuncture, herbal medicine, physical stress reduction, uh, sorry, physical stress, stress reduction, and counseling. <clears throat> Diet and nutrition, this is one of the more uh, what do you, juicy type in, uh, in the commerce. You know? Diet, nutrition, and lifestyle. This includes your body, mind, exercises, your fitness exercises, yung mga nag-slim, with all those uh, bells and whistles of juices that you go out, you drink, you have your, your regimen of diet. Okay? But mostly, these lifestyle changes have been proven to be effective. In fact, when you become old, no, the, the most important thing to remember now is when we grow old, gray hair, when we grow old, it is activity, when it comes to meta-analysis, what, what uh, comes out to be the most important is keeping our activity. As long as we keep our activity, we will be in good condition. So therefore, don't forget to tell your Lola if he wants, or Lolo, to, if he wants to go to church, to the market, go. Wag lang magkakaroon ng fracture sa hip, no? Because that's a problem. But then, keeping those uh, activity, uh, keep uh, going, will give you longevity or will give us longevity um, a few years in that uh, direction. Herbal medicine, foundations of modern day uh, medicines, of course, digoxine of, of Kaxlo, we know this, aspirin from willow bark, quinine from cinchona. Okay, the U.S. doesn't have a herbal pharmacopoeia, but uh, basically we depend on German Commission E and British pharmacopoeia. And uh, the Philippines has its own pharmacopoeia also. The Philippine pharmacopoeia, which I will show you later on. Uh, the other one is manual healing, such as touch, chiropractic, techniques, pressure, and qigong. Qigong is uh, transference of energy, but you take your energy from trees, from something that's alive. So you do the tai chi under the tree, and you absorb the energy from the plant, and you can transfer this to someone who's ill, and that's qigong. Mind-body therapies include music, dance, religious practice, imagery. You can have pharmacologic, also controversial, urculation therapy using EDT, EDTA, and hyperbaric oxygen therapy. Bioelectromagnetic application, the use of magnets, negative or iron, negative iron generator. Yung mga uh, machines that can generate negative iron is also antioxidant. Okay, our options for appraising CAM. There is really no standard way of looking at it. Even though we say it's evidence-based, people will still follow based on anecdotes. So if you are the physician, you have to educate yourself on what uh, advice you can give your patient. And the first thing you should do is keep that patient informed about safety. Even though we do not... Uh, do anything uh, positive in terms of effect, as long as that particular modality is safe, then probably 
that patient will be fine and we can say, okay lang yan. So what, what can we do? Evidence-based medicine, evaluation of education curriculum, physicians being oriented to come, which is in the graduate school research by private institutions or groups, national policy information. Let me run those. Okay, evidence-based medicine in camp, pediatric infectious diseases. From the American Journal of Health Systems Pharmacy, there was generally uh, inadequate data to support CAM for the prevention or treatment of UT URTI in children. American Academy of Pediatrics uh, review of biologically based practice evaluation is limited to only probiotics and it does not even, uh, uh, what do you call this, treatment. It's more of prevention. But somehow this has been given to diarrhea. I've also mentioned the Zing Hao Zhu, or uh, that's used in malaria. Okay, but I don't know whether that's used for, for pediatrics. It's more of a dog. It can also be used for schistosomiasis to prevent the entry of the schistosomula to, to mature into a, an adult. The mind of many medicine, look, prayer is a common adjunct, but there's no, there are no RTCs that have been done. Harvard practices this. Medical centers in the United States incorporates prayer as part of their treatment. In fact, even talking to the patient no? uh, regularly is part of that care. The biofield therapies, homeopathy, therapeutic touch, magnet. And here, only uh, acupuncture have been studied, but only for headache and none for infectious diseases. So look at that uh, as a need. Centers for CAM, these are institutions, websites, that we can refer to for our own uh, education on uh, what would be safe primarily. They tell us what would be safe and therefore what will also produce uh, drug supplement interaction, for example, or food supplement interaction. Okay, we have here from UK, uh, also here UK, Australia has one. Of course, the most popular is uh, from the US. Uh, National Institute does a uh, uh, there's an institute for, for traditional alternative medicine also. And of course, from the DOH, the PITAC, or the Philippine Institute for Traditional Alternative Healthcare. The problem is we do not have enough documentation for, for all of this. Now, the level of information for CAM may be different from what we know. Well-designed meta-analysis would be the, the best way. If we can do this, fine. Clinical trials, well-designed control trials, without randomization, quasi-experimental maybe, can be done. I hope this can be taken up in the society's agenda. Well-designed descriptive um, and observational studies, such as case control, correlational. Expert committee report, you have to have a stand, similar to APP, you know, peer-reviewed published journals. And of course, conclusion from reputable regulatory agencies such as the US, UK, Australia, and even Japan. Traditional references. If we look at our traditional references, we have the Philippine Pharmacopoeia, which is available in BFAD, and contains the medicinal plants list, including the toxicity of the individual plants. You can use this as a reference to, to educate you. The other one, this, these are two volumes. The other one is Prosea. Uh, which is published by the, uh, right now it's available from the Philippine Council for Agricultural Research and Development, or PICARD. Uh, there are three volumes of this. The Plant Resources of Southeast Asia, this is more comprehensive and gives us not only the traditional but also the scientific uh, studies when it comes to uh, the safety and medicinal use of plants in Southeast Asia. There is also an online information for this, the Prosea. You just probably Google Prosea and they, it can take you to the website. Okay, academe. Okay, one, one important. We know that academe has integrated CAM into their educational, into the curriculum. A review of curriculum in the United States over the past five years revealed that institutions which have included CAM in the curriculum were outdated. U.S. to ah. They are, they are outdated by five years. I do not have any information about our own curriculum. We have integrated this in the Ateneo. We, have, we provide lectures, but we depend on, on the Department of Health. Uh, 
what you call directives in, in what traditional medicine components to use. Exposure of students to research evolving CAM. This is something that is also done not only in uh, pharmacy, but also in institutions like UST, UE probably, uh, and other institutions that have uh, provided with uh, training for students, medical students, to get involved with research. Uh, Okay, exposure of physicians to come. These are more of the postgraduate studies, policy briefs, specialty societies, in relation to the practice of integrative medicine. We have to have uh, some form of policy. Okay, research priorities. If we look at research priorities, every one of these has its own website for the evaluation of complementary alternative medicine. We do not have this, although we have PITAC. We have no stand on which one are safe, which one will be acceptable to mix with uh, conventional medicine. The national government agencies, the PCHR, the Philippine Council for Health Research and Development, has included uh, medicinal plant uh, products as part of the national unified health research agenda. And therefore, we can respond to this by providing money to fund research at our own, uh, within the agenda of the society. Okay, research by the private sector, residency training includes some of the studies uh, that involve medicinal plants. Meta-analysis is something that's easy to do, I hope, but if you do not have enough studies, it's not going to hold, but it's something that you can probably look at to look at global trend. Studies in Ampalaya in the Philippines and Brazil are very, very similar. So therefore, you can just, we can just do metastasis. Can you, can you give Ampalaya supplements to children? Because it has been also been uh, claimed to work with viral diseases. Support for research medical societies, uh, we need to address on, uh, will we put our money for research? Okay, so I, I overshoot by five minutes.